Hello everyone, welcome to Blender for Computational Design. This is the third video of the second chapter and today what we're going to be learning is how to make uh, grids by using nested loops. And just a quick explanation uh, to, to understand this concept, let me turn this off for a second. It's this one. Let me show this one off too. So what we're going to be doing is uh, if you remember the very one of the very first chapters is we made a line and this line had its own vertices right uh, we were storing this in a list right so we had a list and then each list has its x y z values for each one of these so what we're going to be doing today is making an array of these uh, we can call them lines or polylines or whatever you want to call them but um, we're going to be using a bit of uh, uh, um, some formulas to, to, to displace them on the c-axis. And this should give us a result, something like this. So we're going to be displacing the, the, the grid. And also we're going to be seeing how to make uh, this type of uh, polylines that you can see there, right? So hopefully you, you're able to perceive that they are very, very thin now, but let me make them thicker. There you go. So it's just two different ways of previewing it. So really what, we, what we're going to be focusing on, it's going from a one dimensional uh, array into, by the, in this case, we're going to have two dimensional arrays. And these arrays are going to define our grid, and then we're going to be able to manipulate that geometry with the formulas. In this case, very basic formulas like uh, sine and cosine, and just testing some things out. Uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the transformations that I mentioned in the introduction video. Uh, if you remember, I highly suggested a, a book called Morphing from Joseph Coma. And I'll try to explain some of those basic concepts in this grid, but later on we're going to apply them when we're doing these this, uh, bidirectional arrays in, in, in a surface instead of a flat uh, grid. So let's get started. Now uh, first I'm going to erase this. Now that I erase that, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define my inputs and outputs. And they're going to stay uh, very similar. Uh, well, not really, because we don't need size or sides, right? But we do need uh, X and Y size of our grid. So we're going to call them U and B. Now, these are going to be the S type, and they both are going to be integer values. So in this case, we're going to put a 3 here. It's going to be our default value of 3 and a nestedness of 2. So we have our two first inputs, which are going to be the x and y values for our grid. Now, for the outputs, uh, what we're going to do is we are going to have the vertices, yes. Then we're going to have our edges. In this case, we're not going to deal with the faces now, but uh, what we can actually have is the, we're gonna call them uh, P-lines, or yeah, P-lines is a good name. P-lines, poly-lines, and also the value is gonna be, what's gonna be the value here? I think it's gonna be B maybe, B? Yeah, because it's gonna be a group of vertices. So what this is gonna give us out is just a list of the multiple lines we're gonna have, right? So it's going to be a list containing each of these lines, right? So this is going to be the output, right? I don't know if that makes sense, but we'll explain a little bit more in depth in a second. Now, uh, again, the first thing we need to do is uh, uh, we can probably leave this as is for now. Mm, let me think for I in range. Okay, so we're going to do a nested loop. So the first thing is I'm going to make one line. Once I have that line, that one line, I'm going to make another uh, for loop inside this for loop in order to repeat that line on, on the next, on the different direction. So 
first x for i in range. In this case, we're going to use our u value. For i in range u, we can say x equals i. Right? So this is going to give us i is going to be changing each um, each time. Why we're going to leave this one on zero right now? C on zero, append. That 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 looks good. Uh, so yeah, uh, x equals i, y equals zero, z equals zero. We're making a point. We're uh, we're uh, we're appending this uh, point into our vertices list that we created here. Now for b in range land, we're creating a line here. And here's where we're, we're going to be doing a little bit of a trick. First, uh, let me try this first. Let's see what we get here. So first, we need to delete the faces because we're not using it anymore. So I'm going to delete this for now. We have edges. We'll leave the edges there. Let's see if this works. We have U, B. Okay, let me see if we can see it. Nope. We're having an error. So let's figure out what the error is for now. For I in range I, X, append B, land vertices E1, B. Well, here we change the U range U. Uh, that shouldn't be it. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, let me find what's going on now. Faces, so I have a faces still there. So name faces is not defined in line 22. So I left an instance of faces there. So line 22, faces append. Here is the error. We deleted that uh, faces list and we're still parsing it. So we're using it. So let's delete it. Sorry if I'm going a little bit too fast. Um, all right, let me see. Is this, is this working? Well, this one is showing us that we have a line there. We do have an edge. But maybe what we need to do is flatten this, perhaps. Because we're having vertices, but the edges are not working. Oh, there you go. The polygons was uh, breaking it. So I deleted that polygon input there. And there were. We have our line. So... The next step is let's repeat this line multiple times, right? So we're going to add another for loop for, um, I'll call it, I don't know, um, hmm, W, <laughs> for W in range B, which is our second direction two points, then we're gonna indent all our operation. So for W in range B, I want everything the same, but the only difference is now, every time we finish this loop, we're gonna move one unit on the Y axis, right? And then repeat the whole line, and again, and again, and again. So Y equals W. Let's check that. Ooh. Well, it's looking better. We have a three by seven uh, grid. It seems to be kind of working. This is doing this weird thing that we're gonna solve in a second. And um, here I wanna show you something uh, while, while we're at this, uh, that maybe it makes sense. I'm gonna turn off the, the indexes for now. We have the viewer draw, which is really cool. But something that I want to show you with this very basic setup that we have here is the Delan Delanoi, Delanoi, Delanoi 2D. And this, what, it, what this is going to do is going to simplify the process of crea creating a, 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 a topography. <laughs> I don't know how to call it for us. So what it's going to define is the topology. I think that's the right name. The topology for our uh, grid, right? It simplifies it. It's an algorithm, the Delanoi 2D. I'll leave a link there if you want to understand how it works. Uh, something really cool about Sparachuck is that you can come to the node here. And if you're really, really into it, you can actually see what this is doing. You just edit source internally and here there's a description of what this is doing and you can actually hack 
how this works, but I'm not going to modify it today, so I'll leave this alone. Let's change the name Polygon to Grid. Grid.py here in the name of our script. Uh, what I have to do here, this is, I'm going to clear it, call the Grid.py. There you are. Again, let me connect this here. Uh, let's connect the edges too. There we are. It's working like it was before. We didn't change anything yet. All right. Um, so yeah, the Delanoi 2D. So I'm going to turn this off for a second. And uh, what this wants is our uh, vertices. So I'm going to uh, connect it. And the output is polygons. So what I can do here is I'm going to use actually my vertices from my uh, script and then what I'm going to change is the polygons. I'm going to plug them here and I'm going to unplug the edges for now. And as you can see, um, this is so nice because it creates this uh, grid for us and it, it's all tri it's, uh, triangulated. So it just simplifies the process because uh, if we want to we can go ahead and, and make an algorithm that will find the closest points and close it for us if we want to have quads, for example. Uh, it's very similar to what we did in the previous video, but we need to repeat it and, and find out the closest uh, points to, to each point and understand where in the grid we are. Uh, uh, I want to focus more on the geometry side and not so much on the uh, topography, so I'm not going to get into that today. Maybe in a future video we'll do that, but for now we'll stick to using this Delanoi 2D. If you don't like this triangulation, I think you can use one of Blender's modifiers to 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 convert to quads, and maybe even Spreadshock has something uh, that allows us to convert this to quads. I'm not sure. Um, usually uh, I use the Python script only, but um, there's so many tools in Spreadshock, it's worth checking them out. Um, you can make your own too, so let's keep going. <laughs> so now the next thing we want to do is, uh, well, first we want to make it cool looking, right? Because right now it's very flat. So in order to make it cool looking, what we're going to do is we're going to change the uh, the C value, right? And I, I want to change these two uh, variables here because I don't really like them. So I'm going to call them IU and IB. And this is just uh, so I don't get confused later on. So again, I U and I B. Now it's two letters, but it's the same variable. So it shouldn't uh, change anything. If we refresh the script, it should still work. Is it working? Looks like it is. Yep, it's working. All right, so the C value, now let's add uh, an algorithm here that allows us to change it. In this case, what I'm going to do is just a simple sign function. So math, we already imported the math module on Python here. So math dot sign. Oh, sorry about that. I changed this text editor. We're back. So add this. So there we are. C equals math dot sin, then I'm going to open parenthesis and then I can say I u yeah, times I b. I don't know what this is going to do, but I'm just using both variables. So we have a bidirectional effect here. So let's see what this does. Refresh and whoa, looks pretty cool. Maybe we, we need to scale this a bit. So we can see we have a repeating pattern here. And maybe this is not the best uh, thing to view it. First, let me make the vertices a little bit smaller. And this also, just so we can see it. We can kind of see those displacements, but it's yeah, we need more uh, resolution, right? It it kind of seems kind of weird. Uh, we can see it's, re it's kind of a repeating pattern, right? We can see it here going up and down. So we can test that. Uh, one of the fast things we can do is scale these, for example, times five. I think this should make bigger. No, it didn't. Times five. 
Oh, not that. Outside the parentheses times five. There we are. So right now what we're doing is changing the uh, um, uh, the the wave uh, height of our sine value. There's a name for that. Uh, it's the longitude. No. Um, frequency. I think. No, the frequency is the the depth. I don't know. I need to look into that. I should have been more prepared for this video. <laughs> Anyways, um, amplitude and longitude, I think. And I think this is changing the amplitude of the wave, which is how high it is. So if we multiply here, we can make it less by multiplying for point by point 0.5. We have a smaller kind of uh, waves. Now, if we want to change this maybe for example y you can test different things here uh, right now for example it's going in two directions maybe just in one we should get a, a sine wave on one of the, the on one of the directions right and by multiplying it what we did is getting a, on both um, right so now if we look at, at both uh, directions we get a sine wave so they are kind of crossing each other and in order to scale these, here I have a formula. I'm just gonna copy and paste it. Let's see. This one, this one is the one from the example I showed you first. And what we're doing is taking the math th scene, then we're multiplying uh, by 0.5. Now what I can do is I'm gonna take out this. Um, here what I'm doing is. Uh, doing an expo exponent 5, I'm going to take that out. So what I'm doing is taking math thin and then the same thing, IU times 0 0.5 times, okay, so I'm, I think what I'm doing here is changing the resolution of this. Let's see how that looks. Yep, so if you look, it looks much smoother, much nicer. So in order to change that, um, the, the frequency, or or the, the the scale of the of of the wave itself, you just multiply the inner value in the parentheses. So if I want to make it smaller on one of its sides, I can actually do it, and we get a different kind of pattern. Um, so this is the first part of the video. I'm sorry if I'm getting you guys lost. In the next part, uh, what we're gonna do is first we're gonna save the each one of these lines. We're gonna s store them. In, in a list so that we can use a polyline viewer. So that's actually a, a, a task uh, if you can if you can make it happen. Try, try to think about how would you, if you want to uh, have polylines, here you go. So visualization polyline viewer. So let's see what happens now and let's see what we're trying to achieve. So maybe it's a good exercise for you. Um, let me turn this off. All right, so let's see how I'm going to make this smaller so it's easier to see. All right, so we have our line, and this is what's happening now. Every time we 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 go on on, on one side, you see that? It, it's one long polyline. And maybe this is the effect that you want, but then when it's coming back, it's a straight edge that is joining the last value of our list to the first one of the next one. So how would you store them on because this you can you can actually put multiple polylines here what it's expecting if it's a list of polylines so how can you uh, give this an input of multiple polylines a list of polylines so that each one of these lines is one polyline well we'll see that in the next chapter uh, that will be the first part and then we'll I'll show you how to use um, some if statements to create some cool patterns and then we'll move forward to the next part of the series. Thank you guys and see you soon. I'm sorry for the delay.